searching for a brighter day. Where do they go? Tell me, what do they say? Greetings to you, people of God, and welcome to Kingdom Worship Center International Empowerment Bible Study. I'm your host, Pastor Sidero Drayton. I'm the overseer, and I'm so excited that you chose to tune in tonight. I'm telling you, without a shadow of a doubt, you are in for a life-changing Bible study, a life-changing delving into the Word of the Living God tonight. I'm telling you, I'm so excited about this Word. Uh, my heart is heavy, but yet I'm excited about the results of this teaching tonight. So I'm asking you to get ready, get ready, and get ready for some heavy hitting nuggets tonight. I thank you as always, all of the ministries around this world online, all of the options that you have yet you chose to tune in tonight to a kingdom worship center's bible study and i'm so honored and privileged to have you and please do me this favor as i always ask share this link with somebody whatever uh medium you're on right now whatever platform you're using uh, whether it be facebook or whether it be youtube i'm asking you to share this link because this information that i'm going to share with you tonight is very informative it's life changing. We're going to deal with some things, some some current events. And, and uh, I normally don't deal with current events too much, but I felt led by the spirit of God to uh, do so today. We're going to share some serious things that have occurred in the last two weeks. And uh, I know many people's hearts are grieving right now. And, and this time to get a balanced understanding. Many uh, believers right now are literally feeling hopeless and helpless against the enemy. And many feel that all we can do is just sit back and watch the devil have a field day in society. And that's the sentiment of many. We, we may not verbalize it. We may not say it because it's not uh, orthodox to uh, say that when we read the word of the living God and understand how much power we have and how omnipotent God is and how powerful he is, how majestic he is, how wise he is and that nobody's sharing the throne with him, but yet subliminally we expect the enemy to have his way while we're on earth and we just uh, make do until the Lord Jesus Christ snatches us up to be with him. You know, but I believe God has something to say about this perspective that some believers have gravitated to. So do me that favor, share this link, tell somebody Kingdom Worship Center International is having a dynamic Bible study. You need to get some paper out, get a pen out, and take some serious notes because God is going to speak by his spirit. So take a moment and do that for me. And as you're doing that, prepare your spirit to receive. I'm telling you, our God is an awesome God. I, I did some teaching on last night uh, through Reveal Truth Empowerment Moments broadcast as it was aired on uh, Victory Praise Network. And I'm telling you the truth. Uh, when I talked about the one thing that affects everything, and I was talking about the presence of God, the manifest presence of God, and David said that in uh, Psalm 27, verse 4, one thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple, and uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord, that means that in his presence, the context is dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence every single day of my life. David understood something about the presence of God, the manifest presence of God. And so we're going to get into some things tonight. So do me that favor, prepare your spirit. Just tell, begin to tell God something wonderful. Tell him how wonderful he is, how awesome he is, how glad you are to be a in the land of the living, that you're still breathing is fresh air. That you have purpose that hasn't totally been fulfilled yet. And you are eager to have that fulfilled. Just tell him he's awesome. He's mighty. Ooh, 
while you're telling them, I'm telling them in my own way, Father, I thank you. I bless you. You are all of that in a bag of chips. You're the great I am. There's none above you. There's none like you. You said, I, even I am God, and beside me there is no Savior. Ooh, hallelujah. Just tell him thank you. Just tell him how awesome he is, how wonderful he is. And we're going to, my God, I feel the anointing. Let's go straight into the uh, prayer and we'll get started. Father, I thank you tonight. You are awesome. You are mighty. You are magnificent. There is none like you. Hallelujah. The song said, there is none like you. I can search all over it. And, 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 and just, it'll be a waste of time. There is none like you. You're awesome. You're mighty. You own the cattle upon a thousand hills. The earth is yours and the fullness thereof. So we just take a moment and worship you. We honor you, Father God. We magnify you. We glorify you, Father God. We make you bigger than every situation, every circumstance, every Goliath that we're facing right now. In the name of Jesus, we render them powerless right now in the name of Jesus. Father God, I thank you for everyone that's tuning in, everyone that will watch this replay. Father God, I realize now more than I've ever realized that I had the fact, but now I have the revelation in you. We live, move, and have our being. Father God, I realize I have nothing to say to your people if you don't say it through me. I have nothing to do unless you do it through me tonight. So Father God, I'm asking you in the name of Jesus to think through my mind. Speak through my vocal apparatus. Bless your people, Father God. Edify your people tonight. Build your people up. We come against every demonic attack against those who are viewing and those who will watch this replay. Father God, we decree and declare that no weapon that's formed against your people shall prosper. And every tongue that has risen up against them in judgment, we condemn it now in the name of Jesus. We use our authority. We use our right that you've given us, Father God, in the name of Jesus. And we decree that we are who you say we are. We do exactly what you purpose us to do and we have exactly what you purpose us to have. And we praise your own credit and I praise your own credit, Father God, for how you're going to move, how you're going to speak, how you're going to build your people up tonight as we study the word of the living God. And I thank you right now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and bless God. Hallelujah. Just take a moment and just tell him hallelujah. Thank you. I praise you. I give you the highest praise. Ooh, hallelujah. Thank you. You are awesome. Glory to God. Glory to God. We welcome you once again, those who just tuned in to a Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. We're here tonight to empower you through the word of the living God. Hebrews chapter four says that the word is quick. It's alive, it's powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Mary had the opportunity to sit at Jesus' feet and the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, Mary have chosen the good part <laughs> and it shall not be taken away from her. So you chose the good part tonight to tune in and be fed the word of the living God via the Holy Spirit. So I thank you. Now let's get into what we're going to share tonight. Hallelujah. What the Lord has led me to share, I've been meditating on this. Uh, normally I know in advance what I'm going to share and I always ask the Holy Spirit what to share because I, I realize that I have no people. I have no sheep. You all are the Lord's sheep. I'm just a tool. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a planter. I'm just a seed waterer. But it's God who supplies the increase. And so I understand that. And so I realized that uh, I have to ask God what he wants to share to his people. And uh, I normally get a quick response, but I just felt an unction to just wait a minute, just to sit back. And, 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 and then I was on uh, the internet and I clicked on, no, I may have been on Facebook and I, I saw what somebody had stated that it was a shooting in um, Uvalde, Texas. And I was like, what is that about? And 
So I looked about, looked at it, and I looked it up and then and began to read it. And, and I just literally got teary eyed. I'm, I'm not one to that cries out with even though I heard inwardly, but as I began to read the story and saw how tragic, saw how horrific it was, how sad it was, I was like, man, I have an eight-year-old daughter in the second grade. And this shooter shot second to fourth graders in cold blood. You know, and when you think about these type of things, it, 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 it's, it really, if you're not careful, you begin to question, does the body of Christ have a purpose on earth? You think about how many people go in the church and then how many people are online having online services and then how many people profess the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior and to, to, to think that in the midst of all, you got uh, over a billion people who name the name of Jesus Christ and, 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 and out of a billion people, we, uh, we, we're powerless concerning things like this. And, and, and so it, it, it really, if you're not careful, you will begin to question, is the church powerless against such things? Or do we have power that the Lord Jesus Christ has given unto us? He said, all power, all authority has been given unto me, both in heaven and earth. Now you go in that authority and utilize the dunamis power that I've given you accessibility to through the Holy Spirit. So what I want to share with you tonight is, is so profound. And, and uh, I, I believe that it's going to bless you. And I believe that your heart will be tremendously uh, changed from the word of the living God. Now, let's get started tonight. Glory to God. The subject the Lord gave me is bridging the gap between end time evil and kingdom assignment. Let me deal with the title, then we'll go into some things. When I say bridging the gap between end time evil and kingdom assignment, what I'm saying is, Jesus prophesied in Matthew chapter uh, 24 some things that would happen at the end of the world or the end of the age. The disciples asked him a question, you know, what signs will there be to let us know that the end of the world is near? You know, and Jesus goes on to uh, expound upon that. And he said there would be wars, you know, Say, understand this, don't be deceived. Understand that many will come in my name and say I'm the Christ, but will deceive many. Then he goes on to talk about there will be wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and famines and all of this. And, 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 and the love of many will wax cold. And he went on so forth. And so when you understand in the last days, then the apostle Paul talks about know this. Understand this, be certain, ascertain, make sure, uh, make certain that you understand this. In the last days, perilous times shall come. And he goes on to give a descriptive of the type of things that will be going on, the type of people that will be living during this time. And, and, and so when you know that, the Apostle Paul say, know this. So he was saying by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, understand these things will transpire in the last days. And so the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ marked the beginning of the last days. So evil has been going on throughout the time of Jesus' resurrection and ascension up until this very moment, but things have gotten progressively worse. And so we're going to delve into some things tonight. So my point is, okay, we know Jesus said it would be like this. But yet and still, we have a kingdom of God assignment on earth. Jesus didn't give us authority and accessibility to his dunamis power, exousia, 
So the exousia is the authority aspect of his power, according to the uh, Greek word. And then you have a dunamis, which deals with the dynamite or the, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. So, so my point is, we know these are perilous times. We know Jesus himself, the word made flesh, stated specifically, unequivocally, that in the at the end of the world, these types of things will be going on. But he, even though he said these things will be going on, he said the end is not yet. So how do we bridge the gap between the truth that these are the eve, in time evil realities and operating in dominion authority based on our kingdom assignment. So we have to bridge this gap between the two and understand, yes, evil is going on, but yet we have a kingdom assignment to operate in God's dominion authority and the power that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. And operate in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit in the earth. So that's the crux of this subject. Now let's move on. Second Timothy chapter three, verses one through five, real quick. This know also, know once again means to ascertain, to make sure of, to make certain of. So understand this also, that in the last days, perilous, dangerous, one context says progressively dangerous times shall come. Look at the word shall. So look at the word no, look at the word shall. No, ascertain, make certain of, make sure of, that in the last days, progressively dangerous times shall come. It's a guarantee, right? Then it gives it, Paul gives a descriptive. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud. I ain't never seen so many prideful people. They just bold in their pride. They're bold in their arrogance. They're bold in their anti-Christ lifestyles. Are you listening to me? They're blasphemous, disobedient to parents. I ain't never seen so many children cussing their parents out. What? You cussing your mother out? She gave, She almost died. Many children don't understand that a woman who's giving birth is at her greatest point of death, her closest point to death when she's giving birth to you. And you got a, the audacity to cuss your mama out because she couldn't buy you some Air Jordans. Are you listening to me? So, so, so disobedient to parents, unthankful. I ain't never seen so many unthankful people. They, 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 they you know, they think they have a, 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 a an exclusive right to everything. They don't need to work for anything. You understand? They, 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 and they're that unholy. We're living in a time where people are just unholy. It's almost a joke. You understand what I'm saying? To live righteously, to respect people, to love people, to treat people with decency. It's almost like it, 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 something's wrong with you if you're not being nasty. Something is wrong with you. My God, and forbid, God forbid that you call yourself keeping yourself for your spouse. I, <laughs> you know, it, it's literally a joke. You know, hey, fornicate as much as you want. You know, commit adultery as much as you want. Forget all these STDs. Just have a ball. You know, people are just, they'll cuss you out at a heart, in a heartbeat. You understand what I'm saying? These are the times we're living in. Look at verse three. Without natural affection. Natural affection. See, that, 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 that. That's beyond uh, just decency. It's like they don't even have natural affection. It's, it, it, it's like, you know how you just have, even if you're not spiritually deep, you know, we're born with a conscience. You understand what I'm saying? Da, 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 da. You know, it's like the Apostle Paul said, our con as if our conscience have been seared with a hot iron. You know, people just, 
Don't feel bad about nothing no more. You understand what I'm saying? And, 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 and. So without natural affection, truce breakers, people don't keep the word in alone. False accused, people lie on you in a minute. You understand what I'm saying? And then, and, 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 and then go drink some coffee. You understand? They'll tell a lie on you, look you dead in your face. <laughs> False accusers, they, 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 they see one thing, but they'll lie and say it was something else. You know, incontinent fears despisers of those that are good. It's like wrong is right and right is wrong. And if you stand up for right, you, it, it, not even if you ram, you're not, you're not ramming the gospel down their throat. You're just standing up for what you believe in and then doing the right thing in the eyesight of God. And they despise you for doing what's right. It's almost just like, uh, you know, you're driving on the uh, interstate, you know, speed limit is 70. So you're keeping it around 70, 72. And somebody come by. I remember one time, literally, somebody came by and shot a bird at me. You know what a bird is. And then it got in the passing lane, shot a bird at me because I was going too slow on the interstate. You understand? They wanted to do 90 and 100, you know, and they passed me while I was doing 70 miles an hour and shot a bird at me, you know. So it's like people are. Uh, it's like they don't want to follow rules. It's it, it, you know, it's like you, uh, for lack of a better word, better word, you're a punk if you obey the traffic laws. You know, if you do what's right in the eyesight of God, man, you you solve. You understand what I'm saying? It, 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 it's, it, verse four says, "Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of God." And now, verse five having a form of godliness. People go to church all the time now. Come on now. Everybody watch me. Know, know what I'm, where I'm going with this. Many have a form of godliness. They holy. They are reverent. They are devout. But they give the Holy Ghost the hand. Holy Spirit, don't come up in there messing up my life trying to get me to live right now. I, I, I have a form now. I look like I'm holy. I look like I got it going on. I look like a devout believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. I look like I'm sold out to the things of God. But Holy Spirit, don't have your way with me. So having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. The Apostle Paul told his son in the faith, Timothy, from such turn away. You don't want to be around those kind of folk who have that form, but they have no power. You don't want to be around people who, 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 who talk Jesus, but they live like the world. They talk Jesus, but, but, but they just as scared as the unbeliever when it comes to different uh, diseases and stuff. You understand? Know you know, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. You say, look, P, uh, not Peter, but uh, Timothy, don't get tied up with those kind of folk. See, I want you to operate in the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to represent God the right way. So don't don't, don't be hanging out people with people who got a form of godliness, but they denying the very power that you need to be doing, have everything that God purpose. Come on, somebody. So understand this tonight. The apostle Paul said perilous times will come. Jesus said that at the end of the world, this is how it will be but the end is not yet. So now how do we balance the reality of what's going on with the equally important or more important kingdom assignment that we have to be light in the midst of darkness? Did Jesus lie? So let's look at another scripture. Luke chapter 10, verses 17 through 19. Hope you're tracking with me. Now, look at what Jesus said, and oh, the word says, and the 70 returned again with joy. They were excited, you know. Many times you see well, where Jesus may have sent them out two by two. He had the 70. He had the 12. Then he had his inner circle, the three. You know, and he said, uh, the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, guess what? Even the devils, demons are subject unto us 
through thy name. Now watch this. Now this was before Jesus went to the cross. Somebody need to get that tonight. The 70 returned. They were disciples. They were students. They were followers of Christ. He sent them out two by two. And uh, the 70 returned and said, wow, devils are subject. Demons are subject unto us through your name. Isn't that amazing, Jesus? <laughs> and verse 18 says, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. In the beginning, Jesus was the word, right? So the word, uh, uh, John chapter one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh, verse 14. So Jesus was the word in the beginning. And in Revelation, he's the word. Word says, I saw a dip, uh, vest, his vesture uh, dipped in blood and it had the word of God. So in the beginning, he's the word. And in the end, he's the word. Are you listening to me? So, so now the word says, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Then he goes, in addition to that, if that wasn't enough, he said, behold, I give unto you power. He said, you think that was something uh, that, that devil's a subject unto you through my name? Let me tell you something else. <laughs> he says, uh, uh, I give unto you power. Now, power in this context is from the uh, Greek word exousia, which means authority right, privilege, or power to act, right? To tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power. Now, power in this context is from a different Greek word, which is dunamis. And dunamis in this context means miraculous might, strength. So now Jesus says, I give you the right, the privilege, the, author the authority, the power to act, tread upon serpent scorpions and over all of the miraculous might and strength of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Are you serious, Jesus? Am I reading this incorrectly? Now, mind you, in Mark chapter nine, Jesus said to the uh, man who had the demon possessed son, he said, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe it. So, so he flips the script. The, the, the father says, uh, Lord, if you can do anything, please have mercy on us. I've been dealing with my, I've been watching my son go through this day in and day out. The demons throwing him on the ground and, and, and he waddling and foaming at the mouth. And there was nothing I could do about it for years. And, 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 and I'm tired. He's tired. So if you can do anything, have mercy on us and help us. And right now, that Mark chapter 9 is almost a literal uh, mindset that many believers have. We've been watching the enemy. Come on, watch this now, people, people of God. We watch the enemy do demonic stuff right in our presence, right in our lives, right in our homes. And then and, and we got spiritual luck, y'all. We don't say nothing. We just accept it as if, well, Lord Jesus, I guess you can't really do nothing about this Uh you know, so we feel like this father did because he's watched the demonic be operative in his son's life and there was nothing that he could do about it. So, like I said in my introduction many times, now believers are starting to feel kind of helpless. We, we know what the word of God says about how powerful God is. He's omnipotent. There's nothing, there's no power greater. If he is omni means all, and potent means power. So if he, not only does he have all power, he is all power. So if we're reading that he has all power, the earth is his, the fullness thereof, they, the world, and they that dwell therein. And then, and then, 
He owns the cattle upon a thousand hills. He said, let there be light, and there was light. We read all of these different scriptures concerning the I amness of God. I mean, he opened the Red Sea for the Hebrew Israelites. I mean, they came through on dry land. He, he swallowed up the enemy, drowned the enemy, you know, and, and then he did all of these miraculous things. And we're reading about this and then we believe it, but it's like we are like that father in some cases. We've seen too much demonic stuff going on. We've seen the pandemic, which was a pandemic in 2020. We've seen, you know, uh, 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 they lied and said there was a coin shortage. Where did the coins go overnight? You know, so there's been so many lies the enemy has been telling. So, that, I mean, he had us on lockdown. What nobody going out there. Most people were scared to go outside of their homes, had us on lockdown. You know, so when we see that kind of stuff, it's like, I want to believe that the power of God is real, but did God give the enemy approval just to have his way on earth? I mean, I know what I'm reading, but what's really going on? You understand what I'm saying? And, and so let's deal with some things. So Jesus said in verse 19, behold, I give unto you power, authority. I give you the right. I give you the privilege. I give you the power to act, to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all of the miraculous might, power, and strength of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Now, let me open with this. I know I said a lot, so opening statement, that's just a formality <laughs> that I'm just opening up to get to what I'm saying. Amen. <laughs> but, 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 Look at this with me. When we as believers hear the reports of such tragedies, and I'm going to go into detail and I'm going to read something concerning the Buffalo shooting and the uh, Uval uh, shooting, Uval, Texas shooting. When we hear these type of reports and see the magnitude of the tragedy of them, it causes many believers to question the church's true power. And you may be watching me right now and say, Pastor, I'm going to be honest with you. I, you know, I was thinking along the same lines. You understand? And I, I understand you. I ain't, I'm not judging you. Because it, it, if I didn't know better, I would think the same thing. But, but, but you, you know, the old song says, you can't make me doubt him because I know too much about him. See, see, see. Some stuff you just got to know that that's when you got to pull on the authenticity of the truth of God and his I amness when stuff like this gets dark in society. Are you listening to me? So, so, you know, it would cause many believers to question the church's true power over the kingdom of darkness and feel powerless against the wicked one and his demonic entourage. You know, I'm not going to take a survey. I'm not going to ask you, you know, but think, think about it. See, we grew up respecting the devil. We grew up respecting the demonic. You know, when we watched uh, all these different horror movies and Nightmare on Elm Street and Carrie and, and The Shining and all these different, you know, I'm telling my age, I'm 55. I thank God for life. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then, and, 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 and what was that? Uh, What was the guy name in the, in, in the movie? Uh, 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 I forgot his name, but Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and then and, and so when you not realizing that we were being programmed to fear the enemy. That's why I don't watch, I don't watch scary movies. I don't want to get that stuff in my soul. You understand what I'm saying? I I want to trust God. I, I don't want to get nothing to taint my view of God and his omnipotence and his I am this. You understand what I'm saying? So so I just stay saturated in the word of God. You know, but people are literally feeling that we are powerless against the wicked one and his entourage right now. Now, let me say this, minus Jesus Christ, we are powerless. But in Christ, we can do all things. In Christ, we have access through the name of Jesus. We have access to uh all of these awesome angels and warring spirits and, 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 and spirits, uh, 
you know, that, that ministering spirit. We got access through the name of Jesus Christ to all of these things. You know, when it talks about the host of heaven, the organizer. So God is the Lord of hosts, the organizer of the army of God. There's an army in heaven that's ready to whip up on the demonic down here. The demonic manifestations that are here on earth, you know, and, and a lot of people say, well, you know, the devil in hell, but actuality, the, the devil is in the second heaven. God is in the third heaven. That's why he has one of the titles of the prince of the power of the air. So, so hell ain't in the air. Are uh, you listening to me? So, so, so many theologians believe that the Lord, uh, the devil is in the second heaven. That's why he's the prince of the power of the air, the power of the airways. That, that's why, you know, you know, I won't get into all of that, but understand this. The enemy has a demonic entourage. And where you think these people who are sold out to the devil get their power from? They get their power from demon spirits. Are you listening to me? So when you understand that there are people, this is the point I want to make. Just as God wants to use us as his sons and daughters in the earth, the devil uses people to carry out his wicked, nasty, demonic agenda and false. Are you listening to me? So, so when we see, uh, you know, we begin to question the, the true church's true power over the kingdom of darkness and then feel powerless many times against the wicked one and his demonic entourage. Now, let's move on here. So so it appears that the devil is in charge. And we talk about God is on his throne. You know, I love the song. I see the Lord seated on his throne, exalted. You know, we sing songs like that and they're wonderful. But when we look at society and the natural, it looks like the devil is in charge. And 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 talks about uh, the little G God of this world, not the big G, the little G God of this world. You know, he blinds the minds of them that unless, you know, people will see the glorious light of the gospel and live. You understand? So, so, so he's the little G God of this world. He's no, I keep telling people. And I hope you get it. If you you you've been consistently uh, tuning into this Bible study of these Bible studies, you already know. One of my favorite phrases is God has no competitors, only haters. The devil is not in competition. With God, he knows he's a defeated, defeated for Jesus Christ. The word says Jesus Christ came to destroy the works of the devil. Are you listening to me? So the scripture says Jesus Christ made an uh, open show of them on the cross. He spoiled the principalities and powers. He made an open show of them on the cross of Calvary. So the enemy thought he had a defeat when Jesus was crucified, but that was his defeat, not Jesus' defeat. <laughs> Somebody need to get that revelation tonight. Let me give you some Bible. First Corinthians chapter two, the apostle Paul said, uh, for if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> so we're going to get into some things tonight. Praise God. Now let me move on. My time is running out. So, so it appears that the devil is in charge, even though God is in control. It appears that Evil will just prevail and there's nothing we can do about it. Why? Because Jesus prophesied it would be like this at the end of the world. The apostle Paul said in perilous times, this is how it's going to be. We can't do nothing about it. We just on earth with the name of Jesus and, and we just powerless. You know, Jesus said it would be like this. Paul said perilous times would come. Hey, just accept it. Hey. And wait on Jesus Christ to return. That, that, that's the only thing we can hope for. And so now the, 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 the question arises as to if the devil is going to have his way and kill, steal, and destroy, then why is the church on earth? 
simply to uh, 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 receive a one-way ticket to heaven by receiving Jesus Christ? Or is the church here to operate in dominion authority and abort demonic missions of hate-filled evildoers? So that's a good question there. And I don't have all of the answers, but I'm going to share with you what the Lord gave me to share. Amen. And you can do your own research and get some more answers, but I just want to give you a few answers. <laughs> uh, now, so the lesson objectives tonight, I, I love to teach. I love to break down things and, and, and get a perspective from the word of the living God to encourage you. Amen. So the objectives tonight is, number one, to uh, view both uh, recent tragic shootings and, and the ages of the shooters. The second thing I want to do is to see God's perspective concerning all of this. Now, being a born again, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, being a kingdom citizen does not stop weapons from being formed against you. But Isaiah chapter 54 says, you know, he created the smith who blows the coal in the fire, you know, and then, and, 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 but no weapon that's formed against you shall prosper. So being a believer won't keep weapons from being formed. They just won't prosper. They just won't come to full fruition. Everybody see that? But let's look at this last thing. I want to encourage you as a believer, you as believers to be anchored in hope. Hope is expectation. Biblical New Testament hope is expectation. So if you... Don't understand that God is already in your tomorrow. You will feel like all hope, all expectation is gone and you have no other recourse but to be in despair. Everybody see that. So let, let's move on here. Now, let's look at 2 Timothy again. Know this or this know in the last days, perilous times shall come. That's a fact. It's going to be like that. Now, then Paul gives the descriptor of how people are. Many of you can attest to all of these uh, different scenarios. Now, then verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. God does not want you to have a form of godliness. He wants you to operate in the totality of the supernatural power of God. He wants you to operate in dominion authority. He wants you to have life and have it more abundantly in the midst of this, all that's going on. It's just like I often use the analogy of, you know, I played football in high school. I played quarterback. And, and so what I look like getting on the field and don't expect the defense to get on the field to try to prevent my offense, offense from scoring. And what would you look like when it's their time to get on offense and you just let them score points on you? So everybody see that? So offense and defense is a part of the game. Are you listening to me? So when you're on offense, you're trying to score on the defense. When you're on defense, you're trying to prevent the offense from scoring. Everybody see that? So now, typically, the teams that win are the one who, ones who execute and strategize. Are you listening to me? So now, let's look at this thing. Let's review the Buffalo shooting. And what I'm going to do is uh, share my screen and look at this from the uh, uh, Wikipedia. So give me a moment, and I'll just... Uh, Let me go ahead and share again. Let's look at this Wikipedia. Buffalo shooting first. All right. Did everybody see that? All right. Let's look at this Buffalo shooting. Now watch this. This was two weeks ago on May 14th, 
2022, a mass shooting occurred in Buffalo, New York, United States, at a Topps Friendly Markets store, a supermarket in the East Side neighborhood. Ten black people were killed and three other people were injured. The shooter attempted to live stream the attack on Twitch, but was shut down by the service in under two minutes. The accused identified as 18, remember that, 18-year-old Peyton S. Gendron was taken into custody and charged with first-degree murder. Now, if he, he would have been one of us, they would have killed him on the spot. But since he was a Caucasian, that's just the way it is in society right now. Uh, the word says in in uh, in the book of Jasher, uh, which they took out of the Bible in 1885, but it was book of Jasher was actually uh, in the Bible in the 1611 King James version. But anyway, in the book of Jasher, it says uh, at the end of the world is Esau, but afterwards is Jacob. So that's another thing there. But 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 so in other words, the descendants of Esau are in charge. So when you look at white supremacists, you know, they doing their evil works, you know, they 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 have been discriminatory to black folks and then others and then and, and Hispanics and all of this. So that's a whole nother lesson. But I just want to let you know that God understands all of this. But anyway so this white young man, 18-year-old Peyton S. Gendron, was taken into custody and charged with first-degree murder. Gendron is reported to have written a manifesto describing himself as a white supremacist and ethno-nationalist motivated to commit political violence. Isn't that interesting? He voiced support for the far right great replacement conspiracy theory in the context of a white genocide. So in other words, they, they hate uh, blacks or Hebrew Israelites and, 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 and uh, you know, Hispanics and, 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 and Latinos and, and other races. They consider us as minority because for fear of other races taking over and wiping out the white race. Are you listening to me? So you say the attack has been described as an act of domestic terrorism and the incident is being investigated as racially motivated. Of course, it's racially motivated. Now, let's uh, keep on. Let's go down. I want to read the uh, shooting, what took place at around 2.30 p.m. The shooter arrived at the top supermarket on Jefferson Avenue in a predominantly black neighborhood in Buffalo, New York. He was wearing body armor and a military grade helmet carrying a modified Bushmaster XM-15 rifle and a head mounted camera through which he live streamed the attack on Twitch. So this was, this wasn't just, uh, you know, somebody thought of spur of the moment. He well thought out this thing. Are you listening to him? In his car, he had a savage, uh, arms axis XP hunting rifle and a Mossberg 500 shotgun. As he approached the scene, he was recorded. He was recorded on his live stream saying, just got to go for it. At 2.31 p.m., Buffalo police received a call reporting shots fired at the store. The first responding officers and firefighters arrived a minute later and reported bodies lying outside the building. At 2.34, a dispatcher started informing responding officers of an active shooter situation at the store. The shooter shot four people in the parking lot, killing three. He then entered the store, shooting eight more people and killing six. So when you look at this, look at, uh, now watch this. I, I, I want to read this. Uh, the shooter returned fire. So one of the Buffalo Police Department officers 
He was a former police uh, department officer, shot at him, and so he killed him, of course. And uh, it says the shooter returned fire at Salter, who died at the scene. At another point, watch this now, the shooter aimed his gun at a white person behind a checkout counter, but apologized and did not shoot the white person but he shot the black people he saw. I listen, so by 2.36 p.m., the shooter had gone to the front of the building where patrol officers were able to talk him into dropping his gun. Man, they would have, yeah, hey, he just killed 10 people, black people, and then you gonna talk to him about dropping his gun? <laughs> but anyway, after he reportedly aimed it at his neck, so after his arrest, the suspect made disturbing statements regarding his motive and state of mind. Wow, isn't that interesting? So look at the accused. The accused identified in court as Peyton S. Gendron is an 18-year-old white man. So long story short, this man was not from Buffalo. He was from Conklin, New York. He drove 200 miles to do this. He was there. He was at the, uh, the, the supermarket the previous day, scoping it out, having reconnaissance to, uh, you know, think out his uh, plant mode of operandi. And then the next day, this is where he did this evil, atrocious shooting. Are you listening to me? So now, let me go back. Let me show you the other one that just happened yesterday. Now watch this. This is very important to understand. Where are these people getting their instructions from? That's something we have to look at now. This is called the Rob Elementary School Shooting. On May 24th, yesterday, 18 year old, 18. We're going to get to that in a minute. The significance of the number 18. It's not a coincidence. 18 year old Salvador Ramos opened fire at Rob Elementary School. Look at the name of the school, Rob. Oh my God. In Uvalde, Texas. United States killing 19 children. Man, my heart was hurting today. I didn't even know that this happened yesterday. I just found out about it today. And I say, Lord, I got to say something about this. I got an eight-year-old. I can't imagine, you understand, uh, uh, you know, uh, going to school and, 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 and not returning. You understand? So nine, killing 19 children between second and fourth grade. So that's roughly between seven and nine years old. Two teachers and wounding 17 others. Earlier that day, look, 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 you know, disobedient to parents. Earlier that day, he shot and wounded his 66-year-old grandmother. So he got mad because she was fussing at him because he, he didn't graduate. And so... uh. He got mad at her and shot her. And then he got in her truck and drove the uh, truck into the ditch right before the school and got out of the uh, truck, got his, had his gun, his rifle that he ordered on his birthday. So he had just turned 18 on uh, May 16th. And so he ordered it, and then he ordered another rifle on May 20th. And so, you understand what I'm saying? So Ramos was eventually shot and killed on school premises by responding law enforcement. So let's go down here. This is, uh, this is so sad. Now, the perpetrator, Salvador Rolando Ramos, 18. So he was a resident of Uvalde and uh, he was a student at Uvalde High School. 
So he had no criminal record or documented mental health issues. He shows in his right mind to uh, be able to plan this with precision. Now you listen to me. So, so let's look at the shooting. Ramos and his grandmother got into an argument at their home in Uvalde over Ramos not graduating. And he soon shot her in the face, talking about disrespect, taking her truck. She was airlifted to the hospital in San Antonio. So, so let's get down there. Ramos then crashed his grandmother's truck in a ditch outside of Rob Elementary School. According to police, Ramos was wearing a plate carrier, a type of tactical vest without body armor plates inside a backpack and all black clothing while carrying a handgun and AR-15 style rifle, rifle and high capacity magazines. Ramos then shot the police officer who attempted to stop him from entering the building. Soon after police reported uh, 911 calls and then he proceeded to go into the classroom and he barricaded himself in the classroom. Then he started shooting these little kids. And he shot a teacher. We know that was demonically influenced. He didn't just think of that. Demons told him to do that. Are you listening to me? So after entering the building, Ramos walked down two short hallways, entered a classroom that was internally connected to another classroom, barricaded himself inside before opening fire on the children and two teachers in the room. Wow. My, my, my. So at 117, so, so the victims, of course, were uh, 19 children and two adults, including a fourth grade teacher, were killed in the shooting. Now, Let's look at something. One more thing. This is so sad. But let me show you one more thing. I want you to look, to look at the significance of the number 18. The number 18. You know, number, numbers in the Bible have meaning, numerical meaning. From the Hebrew, the number 18 means life. 18 is the numerical value of the Hebrew word che, which means life. Wow. It's a deceptively uh, simple two-letter word made up of the Hebrew letters chet and yud, it is a Jewish custom to give monetary gifts in increments of 18, thus symbolically blessing the recipient of the gift with a good long life. Now, 18 is the number of life. Now, two 18-year-old demonically influenced young adults take the lives of of innocent children and other teachers and adults. Are you listening to me? So, so the enemy is very strategic. Why 18? In actuality, they were robbed of their life. Look at the name of the school. Look at the symbolism in the spirit now. Rob Elementary School. Now the enemy robbed these young students of fulfilling their calling, rob them of their destiny, rob them of, of the things that God wanted them to experience. Are you listening to me? So, so, so the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly, right? So let's go back to this and uh, I'm almost through. But I want you to understand how significant this is. Uh, 
let me uh, share and get back to the uh, slides. I want you to think about how serious this is tonight. So revelation of the number 18, 18 is the number of life. So the enemy used two 18 year olds to rob people of life. Watch this now. Now let's move on. Let's look at God's perspective. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, the uh, verse 17, the uh, seven day, once again, they came back and they were so amazed that uh, demons or devils are subject unto us when we use your name. And he said, let me tell you something. Uh, I witnessed Satan like lightning <laughs> fall from heaven. And he said, I'm telling you now, I give you the authority, the right, the privilege, the power to act over all, over serpent scorpions and over all the power, the dunamis, the miraculous might. My God, you mean tell me, through Jesus Christ, when I'm in him, in him I live, move, and have my being. When I'm in him, I have absolute dominion authority over the enemy and his demonic works. Really, over all of the power, the miraculous might and strength of the wicked one. Really? Let's look at Matthew chapter uh 16. See, when you, you like I said earlier, many in the body of Christ right now, we're like uh, that father who viewed himself as helpless, watching his son be demonically influenced and, 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 and taking advantage of all of those years. Say, Lord, if you can do anything, have mercy on us and help us. But Matthew chapter 16, I want to share something with you that's familiar but I don't want it to be familiar to you. I want you to see it through God's perceptional lens. Now, Matthew 16, look at verse 15. He saith unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee. Human beings didn't reveal this to you, but my father, which is in heaven. So you need revelation. You, the only way you to, for you to know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the real deal and the father sent him is the father give you revelation of it by his spirit. Are you listening to me? So he says, uh, Peter, you blessed because everybody around you don't have this revelation. <laughs> the father revealed to you that I am showing up the Christ, the Messiah, the one the Bible, Old Testament prophesied would come. I am he. I am the anointed one who has an anointing and human beings didn't reveal that to you. My dad had revealed it to you. Everybody see that? But look at verse 18, he says, also, no, and I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock, what rock? The revelation of who I am, I will build my church. What is the church? Not the brick and mortar building, but the people who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I will build my people and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And not only that, Peter, I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth 
shall be loosed in heaven. Now, I want to share something with you from, uh, I think it's in uh, either First Kings or Second Kings, and then and, and the, the uh, king, he was getting upset because I think it was either Elijah or Elisha, every time they got ready to come against Israel, then Elijah would, re or, or the prophet would reveal it to the king of Israel and they would counter the attack. And so the, the other king, he was like getting frustrated. He, he called a meeting. He said, man, who in here is telling all the secrets, revealing all our plans to the enemy? He said, man, we ain't saying nothing. It's, it's a prophet. <laughs> And he keep telling them what's up. So I said all that to say this. What would happen if the church started operating? And see, many are operating in the supernatural power of God, but 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 it's not being, it's not getting the exposure that the demonic is. But I'm talking about what if the body of Christ at large started operating in the supernatural power of God, how much of this stuff could be avoided? You know, people were going to church when one woman got prayer taken out of the schools. And we understand the principle of that from a legal standpoint, but can't nobody make you stop praying because the word says that God is everywhere. You know, David said, where can I go to flee from your presence? If I, you know, if I go to heaven, you're there. If I make my bed and shield the place of the dead, uh, you're there also. If I go to the most remotest part of the sea, you're there your right hand will uphold me. So, you know, they can't stop you from praying, you know, but we understand the principle of them. One woman, one demonic woman going through the legal ramifications and having prayer taken out of the school. So, where was the church when prayer was being taken out of the school? You know what I'm saying? I'm saying so, so, so God literally expects us to operate in dominion authority, you know, and, and the word says that heaven is God's throne and the earth is his footstool. So heaven is his throne, but he's given the earth to men. So if men, just like Men are yielding to the supernatural demonic power of the devil and demons. If we as saints start yielding to the spirit of the living God, we can counteract some of this stupid stuff that's going on, even though in the last days this stuff will go on. We can combat a lot of this stuff if we really start operating as God's children. Everybody see that? So, so, so. Look at uh, Ephesians chapter, uh, well, let me go down to one more verse, then I'll move on. So Jesus said in verse 19, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So we're talking about bridging the gap between the truth concerning how Jesus said it would be in end times and the apostle Paul said it would be in end times and operating in our kingdom assignment. You got to understand God is not sharing his throne with the enemy. And you know, my heart goes out to these young, I mean, like I said, I got an eight year old daughter. For a demented, demonic young man full of hate and anger, go into school and premeditatedly kill innocent students and a teacher and shot his own grandmama in the face. Man, that's the epitome of disrespect. No respect for nobody. You understand? But anyway, let's move on here. Ephesians chapter six. Hope you're getting something out of this. My time is running out. Uh, Ephesians chapter six, look at verse 10. Familiar passage, but I want to go deeper. Probably have to uh, continue this, but I, I, I just wanted to share this since it was fresh in society. The news of this stuff is going on. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, 
Verse 10 says, finally, brother, and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So if we put on the whole armor, we will be able to stand. Look at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Let me help somebody understand. The reason evil, all this evil is going on in society is because evil people are yielding to the devil and demons to do it. So when it seems, God, well, God, do something about it. No, he gave you the authority as the people of God to do something about it. That's why he said, if my people, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name, why is that verse in the Bible? If my people, not the world, not the ones who sold out to the devil, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves and pray, get right themselves and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I'll hear from heaven, I'll forgive the sin, I'll heal the land, the healing the land ain't no problem. But my people humbling themselves, taking their rightful place in society and operating in kingdom authority. See, see, Israel wasn't all of that because they were all of that. You say, you, 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 I chose you as a people. Well, because of your military strength, I, I chose you, you know, hey, the enemies of Israel were not scared of the Israelites. They were scared of the God of the Israelites. The God of the Israelites, the one who had the reputation. That's why enemies were scared <laughs> of Israel, man. Oh, oh, boy, look at they God fights for them. You understand what I'm saying? So likewise, God, the Lord Jesus Christ fights for us, but he wants us to operate in his authority. Are you listening to me? So it says, uh, well, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. You don't wrestle against, we're not wrestling against human beings. Demons use those boys on May 14 and May 24. See, the enemy loves to use wounded people and they wounded, they disgruntled with life. They got a lot of anger issues. And then they, they, that's a prime candidate to be used by the enemy for the demonic. And they get so full of hatred, say God ain't real. Then they start going on the side and start embracing the enemy's agenda. And then, and then, and then they get in all of these different hate groups and then, and then, and then, and then white supremacist groups and then, and they want to wipe out the uh, Hebrew Israelites. They want to wipe out the Latinos. They want to wipe out the, uh, the the Hispanics. Now watch this other thing. The white young man in Buffalo killed black people, Hebrew Israelites. The Now let me help you understand something. These children, all these children, the, 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 the school, Rob Elementary School, was majority Hispanic. So they're killing black folk, Hebrew Israelites, and they're killing Hispanics. They want Latino. They want, you know, these white supremacists. They want all these other groups out of the way. That's why black folks still being shot in cold blood. That's why they're trying to arrest as many black men as they can to get them out of the homes, get them in jail, get them locked up. You understand what I'm saying? So they can get some free labor. So it's a real fight. Because the future is bright. And so they want other races totally annihilated. So there's some real stuff that's going on, people of God. So you got to understand this. Uh. Is spiritual wickedness, rulers of the darkness of this world, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. Who's telling these 18-year-olds to do this? Spiritual wickedness. 
in high places. You know, a lot of these groups, are, hate groups are sold out to the devil. And they in all kind of stuff, you understand? And, and, and they full of hatred and the enemy feeds that hatred, fuels that hatred and get people to devote their lives so they can destroy other people. You know, that's demonic. Everybody see that. So, so verse 13, wherefore taken to you the whole arm of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, right? There's a evil right now, but you can withstand if you get put, go, put God's arm on and keep it on. Having done all, you can stand. You will stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, whether ye shall be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And don't forget verse 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. My God, my time is running out, but I just wanted to share some things with you tonight. I may have to uh, do another uh, part to this, but understand this, people. Oh, God, I said all that to say this, and I'm closing my Bible. Do we cross our arms and just let the devil have a field day on earth on the church's watch. Yes, we understand. Jesus said it would be like this at the end of the world. Paul said it would be like this in the last days. Understand this, know this. Perilous times will come. But Jesus said, I give you power. I give you authority. I give you power to act. Come on, somebody. So what, I, what I'm saying to you tonight by the Holy Spirit is, yes, things are jacked up in society. Yes, we're in the midst of evil. Yes, it was tragic what happened on the 14th and what happened yesterday. But God has not relinquished his throne to the enemy. There is hope. If we put on the whole arm of God and start doing what God told us to do, to operate in dominion, authority, and power, he say, all power is given unto me, not the devil. So the devil doesn't have all power. Jesus Christ said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Come on, somebody. Paul said, put on the whole armor and you'll be able to stand against the wiles, against the schemes, against the plots of the wicked one. Are you listening to me? So understand this, people of God. That was sad. It broke my heart what happened. But I don't want you to throw in the towel. I don't want you to give up hope. I don't want you to give up your expectation that God can do nothing about what's going on. He gave man the authority on earth. And Jesus said, I've given you power. You following me, you got power. The tread upon serpents, scorpions, over all of the power of the wicked one. So understand, do not give up. I know it's painful. I know it's, it, it, it's unfortunate. It's sad. But don't you dare give up. Don't you dare think that darkness is just going to prevail and there's nothing children of light can do about it. No, we have a kingdom assignment in the earth that's still in effect. Jesus, go ye into all the world, is still in effect. Jesus said, I will build my people and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's still in effect. Jesus, not he's not going to take back his word because the truth spoke it. He is the truth. Amen. So, so understand this, people of God. I just wanted to bridge the gap between the prophetic reality of end time evil 
in us operating in our kingdom assignment. Be encouraged. Get in your word like never before. Understand God wants to show up and show out. And understand this light shines best when it's dark. It's dark out there in society. Now it's time for the people of God to really shine. Not those who have a form of godliness and deny the power. We, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the true people of God. Who believe this word. Who understands that God is not through. There's some glory. He said the, glo the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth. So understand, we as the people of God unify, come boldly before the throne of grace, cry out to God. We got the power to make a difference. So pray with me. Father, I thank you. I bless you for everyone that tuned in tonight. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would make clear to everyone watching, everyone who will watch this replay to bridge the gap between the truth of how things will be in the evil days. Yet, understanding you've given us a kingdom assignment to operate in the midst of this darkness and to be the light, to walk in your power, walk in your authority, walk in your dominion. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus for your body that you would help us, Father, to line up with your word, line up with your will and take the dominion authority that you've given us, the authority, the exousia and the accessibility to the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit and begin to make a difference in society. We can't stop total evil, but we can sure enough be the light in the midst of it and abort some of these missions of the enemy. And Father, I thank you. I praise you on credit for releasing revelation knowledge and divine insight concerning this. Make clear that which I can't make clear. Reveal the truth of this. Get it in your people's spirit. And I praise you on credit for doing it. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, praise God. I pray that you uh, got something out of this tonight. I really uh, pray that you understand the authority that in Christ that we are packing with. And I'm telling you, people of God, God is not through. So don't you dare give up. Don't you dare throw in the towel. It's painful to see stuff go on in society. And on the outset, it looked like the devil is in charge and there's nothing we can do about it. But. Jesus said, I will build my people and the gates of hell will not prevail against his people. I believe that and I believe you believe it. And let's show God we believe it. Amen. Praise God. So if you got something out of this and you want to sow, we do have a uh, cash app. Our cash app is uh, the dollar sign kingdom worship CTR. Let me get that for you. It's the dollar sign. Kingdom worship CTR and the number eight. Once again, that's dollar sign kingdom worship CTR and the number eight. Also, if you prefer uh, PayPal, we do have that on the screen as well. Uh, paypal.me forward slash kwci and the number eight also if you want to uh just send me an email say pastor i really enjoyed this word uh you have some questions you you have uh some prayer requests i would love to agree with you and believe god to do the miraculous in your life because i i i'm just old school i believe that God is God and he still can do anything. Praise God. My email is on the screen, Kingdom Worship Center, I-N-T-L, at gmail.com. Send me an email. You need me to touch and agree with you. 
I'll be glad to do that. Also, you want to share a testimony. Something that was shared tonight gave you hope, gave you inspiration, gave you expectation that God is still going to be God no matter what's going on in this evil world. I would love to uh, hear your testimonies. Praise God. If you would uh, like to uh, just text me, you got you can text us as well. Here's the phone number, 404-566-1711. Send me a text with your testimony if you prefer texting over emailing. But tell somebody finally about Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Bible Study. I'm telling you, I love teaching the Word of God. It's time in all of our getting to get understanding, to get some revelation, not just have information, but have revelation of the information. Do my favor, just tell one person to meet you online right here next week at 7.30 p.m. Next Wednesday night for another broadcast of Kingdom Worship Center International's Empowerment Broadcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you next week. I appreciate you. I thank you for your support and understand God is with us. Jesus say, Lord, I'm with you always even until the end of the world. Don't you give up, hold your head up and understand. Yes, yeah, dark out there, but we are the light of the world. God bless you. I love you. I'll see you next Wednesday night, 7.30 sharp. God bless you. Searching for a brighter day. Where do they go? Tell me, what do they say? Who has the answer to their faintest cry? Can someone tell?